Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Uh, today we have Michelle Fabrica, our love and uh, coach, our connection coach, and uh, John Coleman, my <laughs> partner. How are you doing, our... guys? <laughs> I'm doing great, <laughs> Michelle. You're looking good. Great um, to be here. Thanks. As our, uh, as our love and relationship coach, a lot of people read into that sex. That's the subtext, love and relationship. Sex, 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 sex. That could be me, right, Art? I, I'm always talking about <laughs> sex. I don't know. You, oh, anyway, to me, every third word. <laughs> anyway, um, sex is a really difficult subject for a lot of people. Um, it's, uh, it's touchy, to say the least, and um, society has kind of uh, um, restrictions on how we uh, discuss sex and talk about it, which is, makes it really important for you and us to be able to talk frankly about uh, sexual, uh, sex and sexual relationships of all kinds, um, including those that are not necessarily governed by religious morals or, or anything like that. So, uh, but sex is so special, you can understand why a lot of people consider it sacred. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I think it is sacred, personally, and yet I also think that many people don't hold it that way. They see it as maybe some way to gratify our needs, or it's like you know, we're kind of we're we're, be, we're being animals rubbing or something like that. And and there's nothing wrong with holding sexuality to be that way, and people can enjoy sex that way as well. But I think there's also, like you said, there's something can be viewed as very sacred, and it's really. Um, it's a kind of a part of every spiritual tradition around the world. And it really acknowledges that our life force and our sexual energy comes from the same place. It's like there's this, um, we can bring this awe and wonder to our sexual expression with another person or even with ourselves for that matter. And to, um, you know, to kind of transcend our ego and our personality and our differences. It's a way to kind of become one with our partner and to, you know, become whole even, you might say. Uh, that's interesting because uh, it, when you say become one with our partner, you know, there's that physical aspect of sex that has been alluded to in, you know, books uh, for thousands of years, um, that it is a, a coupling, you know, that it is really, it does transcend the physical. Um, and I think that's why... Uh, a lot of people consider it sacred, um, you know, but you're, I think you're saying that sex could be considered sacred by those who don't have a religious tradition. Right. Yeah. And it's also just another component of how to maybe enjoy oneself sexually. So, you know, there might be the way that, you know, you get hot for each other and you're horny and you want to, you know, you want to, get entangled and, and enjoy each other in kind of a, maybe there's a, you know, there's kink and there's all kinds of, all kinds of play and role play and whatever. And so there are many f ways to express oneself sexually, but one of the ways also is to hold it as, like I said, sacred or, um, you know, to bring a bunch, like reverence to your partner and, and love and just like love, just opening your heart and being really present with each other. So, that's a, just another way to basically commune with your partner. And maybe it doesn't involve, is, you know, there's not a goal here, right? Um, and generally when I, we've done other videos around sexuality, I really invite people to, you know, drop the agenda and drop the goal. We're not like, ooh, can we touch the divine today? You know, or have some special <laughs> magical experience where we saw stars together. And, and I don't mean to make light of it because some people do have really, you know, profound experiences of, you know, drifting or floating or flying. I mean, you know, it's it's not unusual. And some people can even have, you know, orgasm without even any touch, like just through breathing with, a, with their partner. So there are many ways to cultivate this capacity. And um, sometimes it, um, I mean, it sounds a little, maybe a little woo-woo and out there and like 
and yet there are people who practice that they're you know special practitioners who uh, train you know workshops and books and things like that so i kind of just want to open people's you know possibilities this is also on the menu as something to explore with your partner you know, it's kind of interesting uh, uh, a recent yeah. movie recent probably five or six years ago with george clooney uh having uh, an affair with various people because he was always in airports and he was always flying around uh, mm, i saw that I, movie yeah yeah i did too, yeah very yeah. good movie and uh, but eventually he uh, he fell in love with the uh, the other protagonist uh in the movie and she didn't want to have anything to, yeah yeah she didn't want to have anything to do with him because when he showed up at the house because she was married and had a family and so she was having casual fun sex with him uh yeah. but it was it, it certainly was the anti sacred sex it was uh, <laughs> you know she was just enjoying yeah. it but but yeah. he got caught up with that so uh i i for many of the people who are watching the, our, our programs and and uh, your uh, take on relationships, uh, uh, they're serious people who are looking for a serious relationship, whether it has marriage or living together or whatever it takes. But you're saying that it's okay, uh, what I'm hearing you, to have this uh, sacred sex relationship with a partner who was probably somebody that's later in life your partner as opposed to an original partner earlier life in, in your act too. Am I hearing that uh, correctly from you? Um, I'm no, not I sure if fully understood what yeah, you were I did, saying. I didn't hear that. Oh, okay, good. So I, I, as always, I, I, I get yeah. confused. All right, let me give you another take on, on uh, obviously Art and I read things differently. Hmm. What I got was that you were saying that whatever your uh, attitude is towards sex, we should consider making it special. I'm using the word special instead of sacred. Yeah. Right? So, you know, if you elevate sex in your life to something that's sacred, almost sacred, so special, um, you're going to treat it differently. You're going to treat your partner differently. Is that a little closer to what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. But I guess I want to think, I want to see it as like a both and. So whatever you're enjoying sexually, keep at it, you know. And here's another way to view it and another way to experiment and experience, you know, connection with your partner. And so it's about, you know, really tuning into them, tuning into their breathing, their um their uniqueness, um, you know, feeling your love for them. It's kind of like in a more, like a tender and reverent way. So I'm not saying whatever you even, you know, keep on enjoying what you're doing. This is just another way. And I mean, I, if you would talk to me, you know, 20 years ago, I'd be like, what are you talking Sacred sex, huh? You know, how can sex be sacred? I, it, you know, I didn't understand it. So I guess I want to, you know, bring this possibility as another Another way to play and experience um, love and connection with your partner through sex. Sure, sure. Well, you know, sex is so um, complicated. I mean, it's obviously a physical um, act, but it's also a mental act. It's an emotional uh, act. Um, you know, even booty calls or, or unemotional connection sex um, hooking up, whatever you want to call it, you can't deny there's an emotional um, component there. And so, you know, it's the attitude, I think what you're saying is the our attitude towards sex can affect our, our enjoyment of it, our practice of it, how we do it, who we do it with. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about attitude. If you consider it just a, a physical thing, that's one, one way to have sex. If you consider it sacred, you, you're going to have a different experience. Absolutely. your sex. Right. And if and you so, bring that intentionality, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just trying to interpret, I, I'm, I'm really reflecting on what you're saying, which is what I love, by the way, I love I love our sessions because they really make me think and they make me analyze things that I probably wouldn't otherwise 
think about or or try to figure out. I think what uh, might be interesting is if our viewers, uh, since this has so many ways of being interpreted, we'd love to hear from our viewers. On, um, yeah. Uh, what was the main message that you get from it? Uh, besides the fact that uh, Michelle tends to uh, uh, have us look at all things as something that we can get something positive out of. Yeah. That, uh, and, and just because it wasn't the way we were necessarily brought up or in a first relationship but in our 20s and 30s, right. that uh, we could have full enjoyment in a different way than we ever thought possible before with somebody that we're either uh, hooked up with uh, uh, on a personal, where we live with them or whether sure. it's more casual than that. So sure. and I, I think all, hearing, yeah. from, hearing from our audience would be useful. It would be all our all our conversations with you, Michelle, have been very adult. Let's put it that way, and uh, <laughs> no holes barred. And I think that's wonderful. I, you would, you don't get that enough um, anywhere else. So I, I I find them fascinating conversations. And and in this case, I think you're you're right. Your attitude towards sex, you know, elevates sex, if you will, elevate it to become almost sacred. Yeah. And we can bring more, you know, more things and we can think about the environment that we're going to, you know, like creating rituals around our sexuality. What environment are we going to create so that we both can feel, you know, safe and supported and let maybe there are candles and smells. I mean, people already do this kind of thing, you know, aromatherapy, whatever, um, essential oils, ways to make it feel more special. Maybe you take a sacred shower together where you lovingly bathe each Ooh. other's body, you know, before you. you I know, like that. Yeah, yeah, there are many, and then, and then when, and th like I said, to really tune in to the present moment, you, maybe you synchronize your breathing, maybe you, you know, stay in eye contact while yeah. you're together and holding each other, and, um, and like I said, you know, dropping the agenda, but just bring this, this miraculous being is in front of you, and they are gazing into your own, you know, you know, you see that your partner is the divine. And so, so there are ways to kind of play with this concept and, you know, calling it a concept makes it sound like so intellectual, but, you know, experiment sure. and play and, and feel into this. What would that mean to hold your partner as, as divine and, and, and to also accept yourself that way too. So yeah, I want to, um, Go forth and uh, experiment. And, um, and you know, in, in this discussion, you just kind of throw out some great specific techniques. You just, I love the way you kind of gloss over them. But if, as I listen to them, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I could try that. You know? Yeah. That, so thank you. This is really, yeah. really good. good, great conversation. And I have to say, I don't know anybody else who's talking this way. Uh, being this honest and open about uh, relationships, love, sexuality. So you're terrific. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. Great to be here. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.